Boys and girls, what's up? It's BQ back with your Impact Rebellion preview for 2021. Headlined, of course, by Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. So consider becoming a subscriber if it is your first time here. For those of you who uh, who missed the streaming podcast format, so those of you who, who listen to uh, the podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, all those things, I promise uh, the Impact Lounge will be returning very, very soon to those platforms. Of course, with YouTube as well, when we're dropping the podcast. So before I get into Rebellion, let me get this out there first and foremost. If you listen to the past episode of The Cool Factor uh, last week, you'll notice TW did the show solo. Um, I always work a lot. That that doesn't change. But right now, um, I'm working... Uh, pretty insane amount of overtime as a matter of fact this week i have a uh, 16 hours of overtime so that's how that's how crazy it is and i also work overnight more often than not so it really limits my ability to podcast in the evening i'm able to do some content in the morning you know sometimes for my office sometimes in my car you guys know that but the cool factor we record that at night and because i'm an overnight worker and uh just not having that availability uh, you, you might hear a lot of solo TW podcasts for the rest of April, um, all of May, and maybe even part of June. So it's going to be very schedule dependent. There are going to be times that I am, I am able to step in and uh, you know resume my role. And there's going to be times he's doing it by himself. So I just put that out there for you guys. For those of you who do listen to the Cool Factor podcast uh, each week, I'm going to be missing in action quite a bit for that podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk Rebellion. I'm going to try to get through this stuff as quick as possible. The funny thing is uh, I just watched the past episode of Impact, but I recorded this before the episode and uh, unfortunately had to delete it and redo it. So it wasn't very smart of me to uh, record prematurely, but I did. So uh, that's where we're at. But now I'm, I'm back again and talking Rebellion. So let's kick it off talking about Rich Swan, Kenny Omega. That's, of course, the headliner. It is the main event. It is the big match. I've told you guys I'm going to to maintain my opinion on this, that Rich Swan is going to win. I understand that it's very unlikely. I mean, there's no storyline on the AEW side. and which is Which I get that, because this is an Impact Wrestling pay-per-view. So it's an Impact Wrestling storyline. It's not... AEW's job to promote this match, promote this show. That being said, Kenny Omega may show up with the Impact World title next week, so you would you would think uh, it'd be in their best interest, at least from the creative process, to make it a little bit more known to their fan base, uh, or those who watch that show specifically, that uh, he is competing against Rich Swan for the title. You know, that way it's not a, a big shock shocker next next week it, it's not a big shocker if kenny uh, i'm sorry um rich swan shows up on on dynamite with, with the belt you know but it, it's whatever uh but just the way that the match is put together creatively it, it it's hard to imagine kenny not winning this thing on the flip side of that they have built this where kenny is very much establishing establishing himself as a hated heel and they're doing the sympathy, sympathet, sympathetic baby face thing with Rich Swan. So normally when you see something like this, it's a good indication that the baby face is going to win. Of course I want Rich Swan to win this match. But I have to think that Impact would love to get a Kenny versus Eddie Edwards match. Kenny versus Moose. Uh, maybe one or two other guys on the roster. Who knows? Maybe there's a storyline of people trying to get the belt back. I think Impact would have more interest in that than uh, Rich Swan winning the match and having the belt on, on Impact Television. I think they'd have more interest in Kenny Omega staying on the show. But if anything, I think it would give us more uh, unpredictability if Swan were to show up on that show and Kenny wasn't involved in his own storyline regarding the world title on, on Dynamite. You feel me on that? So... That being said, um, they are building to something on AEW, like a definitely a five-on-five -five match. And Moxley only has 
Eddie Kingston on his side. So maybe this is going to be an opportunity to get some impact guys in there. Maybe Finn Juice in there. Like can't, like Rich Swan and Finn Juice, you know what I mean? Maybe that happens, maybe it doesn't. I don't really know, but uh, I think that would be cool if that's the case. But I'm going to stick by my prediction that Rich Swan is going to win. Uh, I want to, because I want to be right. <laughs> I want to be right very badly. But uh, I understand Kenny most likely will win this match. Let's talk the Impact World Tag Team Championship match, Finn Juice versus the Good Brothers. Now, if, if you don't watch Dynamite, the Young Bucks have recently linked back up with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. The Young Bucks are AEW Tag Team Champions. The Good Brothers are probably going to get their World Tag Team, your Impact uh, Tag Team Championships back. And then Kenny Omega clearly has belts. So it's hard to imagine they're not going to do this whole, you know, hey, we got all these titles thing. That's another thing that kind of, you know, gives away uh, the, the the match, the, the finish of the match. I have no idea what to expect from the world, the world, type, the main event. So that's the most unpredictable, ma unpredictable match on the show, with the exception of who we think is going to win. There's a lot of unpredictability. The rest of this card, not so much. So going back to what I'm saying, Finn Juice versus the Good Brothers, I think it's very, very clear they're going to get the titles back. You know, the the tag team titles took a tour to Japan and back. That's what they were trying to do—a little. Uh, brand recognition, get the name out there. I don't know if they defended the titles or not. I, I would have liked, I would have liked to hope. I mean, I I would like to think that they did out there, but I have no idea. Pretty clear that Good Brothers will win. I have no interest in this match because we just saw it, and I understand that guys are going to fight each other multiple times in a in a wrestling company. Every match can't always be fresh, but. If we're going to see it again, I want to see it down the road. You know, it's like there was the match was kind of rushed, rushed the first time, which I understand why. But you rush it the first time. You know me. I, I love, like, a great build, you know? I would have just loved a couple-month build of uh, of these guys um, not getting their hands on each other and, and just building up to this match. Because, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to show us that we haven't seen already. So I don't, have, I don't have a lot of interest in it. But I do think the Good Brothers are going to win. Deanna Perrazzo is going to take on Tennille Dashwood. This is a match I do have interest in. Because it's fresh, it's new, it's something we haven't seen before. And it's a heel versus heel match, which is very random. If you would have asked me a month ago, I would have bet uh, every dollar I have that this was going to be a triple threat match. And that we're going to uh, get you know force a baby face in there. Now, the Taylor Wild promo is do say that she's showing up at the Impact Zone in in uh, April, and I'm pretty sure this weekend is the last opportunity for her to do that, right? I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So, is she just going to show up and do whatever? Um, I, I, I foresee more of a scenario that's it's very... It's the Impact Wrestling playbook, you know? The match is over, Deanna wins, and then Taylor Wilde comes out, and, you know, I'm, I'm challenging you next. Very much, you know, the Impact playbook... That's what I think is going to happen, so I do think Deanna Perrazzo is going to win a match. I, I am intrigued, but, you know, we saw this Susan versus uh, Tennille Dashwood match was really awkward as, as two heels wrestling. And granted, Susan doesn't wrestle like she can wrestle, but it was an awkward match to watch. And sometimes heel versus heel matches can be like that, especially one like this that they didn't really build a whole lot. And I can understand why. You, you, you get too intricate with a heel versus heel storyline and one starts organically becoming the baby face and they don't want that right now for either of those girls. I do think Deanna Perrazzo keeps the championship though. Ace Austin, he, uh, he's defending the exhibition championship in a triple threat versus Josh Alexander and TJP. Why is TJP in this match? He lost the exhibition championship and then he lost the rematch and he's in this match. You got a, another opportunity. So why have a rematch clause? And, I mean, why, why even have it if it means nothing? You have an opportunity to get your title back, and now it's end of the line. But no, that's not what they're going to do. You guys know I've also been saying I really wanted a nice one-on-one -on -one TJP versus Josh Alexander match. They've had amazing matches on Impact, especially the last one. They've been killer. They've been phenomenal. Imagine that what they would have done if it was a, you know... 
I say a first time match. I think they wrestled once before when Josh was part of the North. But to me, this this version of them and his version of Josh Alexander's single, he's like a new wrestler. So I basically, I'm talking first match pay per view. Imagine what they would have done. Now they have to outdo the previous matches that they did. And as I always say, every time you add another competitor, it waters it down for me. So I would have just preferred TJP the champion against Josh Alexander, you know, two baby faces. Because, you know, I talked about two heels. Very difficult to build build because one organically kind of becomes a baby face and then it can kind of ruin stuff. But when you have two, two, uh, two good guys, two baby faces, yeah, one might kind of become the heel. But in that process, a lot of heat is built. And you can, and when the match is over, you can shake hands and you can bring those guys back, back down to the babyface level. You know, like if one one starts getting some, some real momentum as like the bad guy of the of the match, you you can bring it back with the sign of respect and move forward. So it's it's kind of easier uh, to book that. Ace Austin is going to win this match though. He's going to pin TJP. I'm uh, pretty sure because they're not going to have uh, Josh Alexander. I, there's no reason for him to lose at this point. He's the contracted guy. I don't know if we're going to get that big. I mean, they're, they're clearly going to ch- move towards Josh Alexander versus Ace Austin after this. Clearly. I mean, it's just plain as day. So when I talk about paint by numbers, cookie cutter, that's, you know, that's what I'm talking about. This kind of stuff. I don't know where we're going to get that big Josh Alexander world title run, X division title run, because I don't get the, the, the feeling that he's going to be around long term. But we'll see if uh, we'll see if he does get that title run, title run. But I think it's just very clear Ace Austin will win the match. He will he will beat TJP, who will in turn, if that's what happens, lose to the third time to Ace Austin in the last couple months. So what do you what do you do with him from there? Maybe maybe he's done. We'll see. Matt Cardona versus Brian Myers. I definitely don't expect this to be a, a Matt classic of any time of any kind. Many of you probably have no interest in the match. I actually do, because I love what Brian Myers is doing. I have some interest in what Matt Cardona is doing. I'm not in love with everything he's doing with Impact, but I have some, I have interest in it. I, I like seeing him part of the company. I know TW is very indifferent on that. Like He says he's just Zack Ryder to him, and he can't look past that. I like seeing wrestlers reinvent themselves, or at least try to. So, uh, looking forward to the match. It's going to tell a completely different story than anything else on the card. And uh, Brian Myers, I think, is going to win this match. This is probably going to be the the fuck finish of the show. We're not going to go through a whole Impact pay-per-view without a dusty finish or, a, you know, a ref bump. You know, you know these things are going to happen. And this is probably the match uh, we we'll get the dirty finish. I think my issue with the storyline for this, though, is you know acknowledging that they have the podcast and everything like we know they do but acknowledging it and then trying to tell the story that they only don't get along at work is kind of ridiculous but uh i say brian myers wins trey versus sammy callahan the main event's going to be the the show stealer that's going to be a match of the night but this is going to be uh second place i think they've, they've told a good story it's it's been a very interesting build i would have liked for them not to face each other a couple weeks ago i don't i don't think that was totally necessary you could have still done the six the last man standing thing so it, it was clear that they were building towards some kind of stipulation match i hope that this is a real grudge match and not not a silly hardcore match but i have a feeling it'll be a it'll be a grudge match trey miguel's gonna win this thing sammy callahan unfortunately loses at just just about every pay-per-view but I fully expect Trey Miguel to win this because he's the one they, you know, they need to elevate. I think they could also elevate him quite a bit in a loss in this case. I truly do, but I don't think they have uh, the balls to do that. I think I hope they prove me wrong, but I think they're going to be like, "Yo, we're trying to push Trey. He needs this win." But they've tr- truly done a really, really good job. Uh, good job with the storyline. I've I've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the match. One that I, another one I'm not looking forward to a whole lot is Chris Saban teaming up with James Storm, Willie Mack, and Eddie Edwards versus Violent by Design. 
This just feels like a match where they're like, hey, we need a bunch of people to wrestle, have a match. I do give them props though, because this isn't this isn't like hard to kill, where it's like they got everybody on the freaking card and some of these Impact Plus shows. Sometimes you just gotta not be afraid to to just go with the hot angles and go with the hot wrestlers, and uh, it, it lets other things breathe a little bit when you don't force people onto a onto a show. I can get it with Slammiversary and Bound for Glory because you have gauntlet matches, but you know, Hard to Kill was all these multi-man matches. Multi-women matches, you know? That's not the case with this one, except for this match right here. I don't have a lot of interest because we just kind of saw something like this, even though it was, it was a pretty good match. I like the, the rules and all that. But Eddie and Willie Mack already took on Violent by Design and lost. They're going to win this time around. Eddie Edwards is probably going to hit the Boston knee party, you know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they they don't take out Willie Mack or something and put Tommy Dreamer in his place. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Now, we know Eric Young's not going to wrestle in this match. And clearly they had, you know, he was in the pay-per-view graphic. They did all, they recorded television based on him being in the match. So we know they're not going to announce the change to this match till maybe the day of. There's, there's opportunities here for some surprises with this pay-per-view. Uh, one would think another option is to do a three-on-three -three match. I don't think they're going to take someone off the pay-per-view card, though. So I think it's I think they're going to have a mystery partner. But the thing is, Impact is too small of a has too small of a roster to do a five-man stable. So what I think is going to happen, I think they're just going to uh, plug Madman Fulton in there. That's my uh, that's my my guess. I think it's going to be someone from the roster. I don't think they're going to take it, take the opportunity to debut someone, because the stable's already kind of big. So, you're, you know, just debuting a lackey, I don't really see it. So I think they're going to pull Madman Fulton, um, and maybe maybe it's someone else from the roster. But that's who I would go with. That's what I think they're going to do. But uh, Eddie and his team, they're going to win. And then finally, Fire and Flavor, they're going to take on Jordan Grace and. Uh, Rachel Ellering. It was funny because before this Rachel Ellering rumor came out, the week before on the Cool Factor, I was like, yo, I would love to see Rachel Ellering in Impact. I have always put her, and you may completely disagree with me, and that's totally fine. In ring wise, I've always put her on the same level as Tessa Blanchard. She just doesn't have the look or physique, or, you know, Tessa Blanchard has a more of a great deal of star power and can get away with wrestling the dudes easily but I always thought in ring uh, they were very very similar so this is a good addition I've been wanting them to bring her in for a long time Jeff Jarrett brought her in to get squashed to Sienna at one point and then she did a knockouts knockdown but I think she had her eyes set on a uh, NXT you know what I mean so I believe she's close with Deanna in real life so I'm sure that helped uh, bring her aboard but I'm really looking forward to seeing what she can do. She last wrestled on TV in the women's tag team tournament for AEW. She was, uh, you know, one of the surprise opponents. You know, who who knows if this means Chris Hero is next uh, to join the company. He's not a guy that i necessarily a huge fan of, but, I mean, it would be a good get if they're able to do that. So I don't know. But, but I'm looking forward to this match because I really, really, really like Rachel Ellering a lot. I uh, enjoyed her little run-in and everything. She sounds like she's got a good theme song. You know, that means a lot to me. I love a good theme song. And I think they're going to take the titles, too. Uh, there's a possibility they don't, because usually when you have a surprise partner, surprise opponent, and it, it's announced right then and there, that person usually wins. Uh, Eric Young didn't win the title last year's Slammiversary as a surprise guy, but they did build build an angle to let that let him winning the <laughs> winning the title like three or four weeks later. So usually when they have that surprise, that usually gives away who the win is going to be, uh, who the winners are going to be. But because it wasn't a surprise at the pay per view, and we know ahead of time, I think there's a chance that Fire and Flava do win this thing. But one thing I know for sure is that we are going to see these four girls fight every day for the next like three or four months. We're going to have the same problem with Havoc and Nevaeh. 
where it was kind of the only team, and they just kept fighting each other. It was worse with them because when the, the whole tag team division started getting teased, they were fighting each other every week, and they just all they did was revisit that down the road. So I do think uh, who, regardless of who wins, they're going to keep fighting um, and, until they fight again at the next pay-per-view. <laughs> I truly feel that. Uh, you can let me know if you agree or not. I'm going to give the edge to Jordan and uh, and Rachel, though. They like to put belts on new stars. And I think, uh, you know, Impact, sometimes they like to do the pay-per-views where it's kind of like all or none with the titles. You know, I think we're, we're going to see some kind of new world champion at the end of the night. We're going to see new tag team champions. I think we're going to see new tag team champions, too. And then the, the knockouts and X Division championships will, will stay put. But I'm going to give the slight edge to to Jordan and uh, Rachel Ellering for the for the sake of the Knockouts Tag Division not getting too stale. As good as Fire and Flava are and as entertaining as they are, I just think they dropped the titles. So Rebellion looks like it's uh, shaping up to be a good show. You know, I'd been saying that the last recent uh, the last Impact Plus shows, the most recent ones, that they were going really really hard. Putting the cards together, I was worried they weren't going to be able to put a good card together for this. Half of it I have interest in, the other half I kind of don't, because I feel like we're getting some recycled stuff. Uh, I mean, of course we are. We're just getting versions of matches we've seen already, and that never interests me. If it's, but again, I don't mind watching the same match or same matches, but not when it's just every week or even if it's a month later, two months later. Like I, I always say, like let shit breathe, let shit breathe. You know, so we'll see if that's what they do. Thanks for checking me out, though. Uh, that is that'll do it for my thoughts on uh, Rebellion, the build. Uh, you know, some of my uh, predictions for the show. We will hopefully uh, get an opportunity to review the show after that happens and let you guys know what I think there. Thanks for checking me out. As always, I'm your boy BQ. I'm out. Peace.